Many of the most effective, most researched skincare ingredients are based on vitamins or vitamins. In this video, we're going to talk about the vitamin-based products you want to include in your skincare routine, but we're also going to go a little deeper and we'll chat about why you want to focus on eating these nutrients too for the best, longest-term effects on your skin. So for product recommendations and more science-backed skin tips, keep watching. So a quick hello if you're new here. My name is Fiona and I'm a registered nutritionist with a master's degree in nutritional medicine. On this channel, we talk about how to eat for great skin because true skincare starts on your plate. If you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button because it really helps the channel. So let's kick off with our first nutrient, which is vitamin A. Now, most of us know vitamin A as retinols or retinoids in skincare. And this nutrient is a powerhouse. Research shows that it can reduce breakouts, fade hyperpigmentation, and reverse wrinkles. But there are lots of different types of retinoids or vitamin A in skincare, and the key to getting results is to understand what you're using. So let's look at our vitamin A ladder. At the top, the most potent and the most researched form of vitamin A is retinoic acid. Now this is found only in prescription-based skincare, but with the rise of these online personalized skincare providers, you don't necessarily need to go and see your doctor to get your hands on this. Brands like Dermatica, Curology, Skin and Me and Clearer will often use retinoic acid in their formulations after you've completed a medical assessment of your skin. Now there are a few forms of retinoic acid used but the most common and the most researched one is tretinoin otherwise known as all trans retinoic acid. Now that sounds already confusing but all you need to know is that tretinoin equals retinoic acid equals strong vitamin A. These personalized skincare brands will start you on a low dose of this vitamin A, say 0.025% or even 0.01% and then gradually move you up to 0.1% which is the strongest concentration you can get. Of all of these brands, Brands, my personal favorite is Clearer. Unlike other brands which use a benign but pretty generic base for the vitamin A, Clearer also personalizes the base of the formulation to your skin. So they might use some aloe or some hyaluronic acid or some ceramides for example, depending on what you and your skin needs. Now the downside of this is that it is more expensive than some of the other providers, but they say that their stuff is so effective that you can basically throw out all the other actives in your routine. I've just started using Clearer and I have to say, so far I am incredibly impressed. The product feels velvety, it sinks into my skin, it's a real pleasure to use, and I've experienced little to no irritation, even though my skin is definitely not used to prescription strength vitamin A. If you'd like a video on my journey with Clearer as it progresses, just let me know. Now, whichever provider you use, the downside of using retinoic acid or tretinoin is that it can be quite irritating to some people, especially if you have naturally drier skin. And some people just don't want to use prescription-based skincare, and that's fine. So let's go back to our vitamin A ladder. On the next rundown is the retinaldehyde or retinal version of vitamin A. Now, you don't need a prescription for this. And although it's not as potent as retinoic acid, it is much gentler on the skin while still being effective. The brand that really pioneered the use of retinol in skincare is Medicaid. Their crystal retinol is available in strengths from 0.01% all the way up to 0.24%, which is their latest release and also their strongest version. These products are very cosmetically elegant and they feel expensive, which they are. They're also fragrance, which personally I like, but I know can be off-putting for some people, especially if you have sensitive skin. Now, Medicaid used to have a bit of a monopoly on the use of retinol in skincare, but that is no longer. The Ordinary have fairly recently bought out a retinal emulsion, which comes in at a pretty punchy 0.2%. Again, this product is very light and it's unfragranced, and I have used it and experienced pretty minimal irritation. It definitely helped to keep my skin clear and minimize the appearance of pores, but I didn't use it long enough to comment on its anti-aging effects. Now, retinal, even though it's gentler, can still be too much for some people's skin. So let's go back to our ladder. You then have retinol and retinal ester forms. And I'm bunching these together because they're often used together in products or in formulations. Now, retinol might do something, but to be honest, the retinol ester versions require too many steps of conversion to truly be effective on your skin. Now, retinol typically comes in concentrations of up to 1%, but new regulations coming into the EU have capped that at 0.3% in leave-on facial products. So again, if you really want the benefits of a vitamin A product, using a retinol or a retinol ester form probably isn't going to give you the best results long-term. Where they can be really helpful is as 
an entry point or as a first step up that ladder before you move on to the retinal or the retinoic acid forms. Now for that, Paulie's Choice 1% retinol treatment is one of the punchier retinols out there. And if you have particularly dry or sensitive skin, then the Olay Retinol 24 Night Cream can be a great place to start. It does contain a retinol ester form, but it's also a very hydrating formula to minimize irritation. So those are the products. And to recap, retinoic acid has been proven to reduce breakouts, fade hyperpigmentation, and reverse wrinkles. And the other forms of vitamin A may do that to a lesser degree and might just take a bit longer. Whatever product you choose, you want to use it in the evening because light degrades retinol and you also want to follow it with an SPF the next day. Moving on to vitamin A in food, and this is the secret sauce that barely anyone talks about. Research suggests that optimizing vitamin A on the inside can help to control how oily your skin is and also support a healthy acidic pH for your skin, both of which play a key role in keeping your skin clear and youthful looking. In terms of the best foods to eat, I always say think about what your grandmother or your great grandmother would have eaten for breakfast. We're talking whole eggs, full fat dairy, oily fish like herring, and also liver. Now, I don't like liver, so I don't eat it often, but I do make a point of eating whole eggs and full fat dairy, and I intend to keep doing this to support my skin's long-term health and appearance. So use vitamin A on the outside and focus on eating it too to support your skin from the inside. Moving on to our next nutrient, which is vitamin C. Now alongside vitamin A, this is one of the better researched skincare ingredients. We know that vitamin C brightens, it protects your skin from stresses like UV rays and pollution, and some research suggests it can also help to reduce wrinkles. Now like vitamin A, there are lots of different forms of vitamin C used in skincare, but we're going to talk about two in particular. The first is the most active form, which is ascorbic acid. Now the industry standard for using ascorbic acid in a product is SkinCeuticals C. E. Ferulic. The upside of this product is that it's silky and it's a real pleasure to use and it's genuinely effective and particularly good at brightening the skin. The downsides are that it's unstable, simply because ascorbic acid is fundamentally unstable. So what that means is that this product can turn orangey brown and then brown, often in a matter of weeks, and that means that you can't use it anymore. And that's especially annoying because this product is also really expensive, coming in at about $182 or £165. So a good alternative is the Geek and Gorgeous C Glow. Now this also uses the ascorbic acid form of vitamin C, but Geek and Gorgeous actually tell you to keep it in the fridge to keep it fresh, which really, really works. Now, if your fridge isn't anywhere near your bathroom, which mine isn't, you can get these little dropper bottles so you can decant a bit of product into the dropper bottle, keep the little dropper bottle in your bathroom so you only have a few days worth out at a time and that won't oxidize. This is very lightly fragranced. It gives you a satisfying tingle when you apply it and it's really effective at brightening as well. It's also way more cost effective than the SkinCeuticals version. In fact, I think it's literally like a tenth of the price and I will pop links to all of these products in the video description box below for you. The other form of vitamin C worth mentioning is sodium ascorbyl phosphate which has been shown in the research to help reduce breakouts. You can find this form in Mad Hippie's vitamin C serum. Now I used that product for years and it definitely helped to keep breakouts at bay. It's also a good one to try if you have sensitive skin because the sodium ascorbyl phosphate version of vitamin C is much more gentle than the ascorbic acid one. Whichever product you choose, you want to use vitamin C as part of your morning routine so that you can benefit from its antioxidant protective effects all day. Now, let's talk about vitamin C in food. The best barometer of vitamin C intake is how many fruits and vegetables you eat. And the research consistently shows that the more fruits and vegetables people eat, the brighter, tighter, and younger looking their skin is. One study even showed that the more vitamin C people ate, the fewer wrinkles they had. And I don't know about you, but that is enough to convince me. The best way to optimize your vitamin C intake and therefore your skin is to eat a fruit or a vegetable or a type of salad every time you eat. So that could be some blueberries with your breakfast, it could be a little side salad with your lunch, and it could be a side of roasted vegetables with your dinner. Or even if you're having a bag of crisps or a bag 
of chips for a snack, just have an apple with it. You'll be amazed at how easy this is once you get into the habit and it will keep your skin looking good for years to come. Moving on to our final nutrient, which is vitamin B3. Now this is more commonly known as niacinamide in skincare. Now the research for this is slightly less strong than vitamins A and vitamin C, in part because a lot of research into niacinamide is funded by the skincare industry. Still, we have pretty good data to suggest that using niacinamide in skincare can help to strengthen your skin barrier, soothe redness and even out your skin tone. And personally, I also think it's really good at controlling oiliness or shininess. Now, the product that really put niacinamide on the map was this one. The Ordinary's Niacinamide 10% plus Zinc 1%. Now, this feels a little bit tacky when you put it on, but it dries to be really lightweight. And again, I used it for a long time and it really did help to control the oiliness that would develop on my T-zone as the day went on. This, like many of The Ordinary's products, is also really cost-effective. The beef I have with this product is that it uses niacinamide at a 10% concentration. Now, if you actually look at the research the concentrations of vitamin B3 or niacinamide that are tested are between 2 and 5%. So 10% can be really irritating for some people. So if that's you, no, you're not going crazy, it is a thing. Now it's actually weirdly hard to find a product with less than a 10% concentration of niacinamide because it's kind of become the industry expectation, even though it's not the evidence-based standard. And yet, this product, Alpha H's Vitamin B Serum, does contain 5% niacinamide. It's thicker and more hydrating, so it can be a great option if your skin is sensitive or dry or more mature. Now, I like to use niacinamide in the morning, again, as I said, to benefit from its oil regulating abilities, but really you can use it in your morning routine or your nighttime routine, whenever it suits you. And let's talk about vitamin B3 in food, because this gets interesting. So if you don't eat enough vitamin B3 and you become deficient in it, you'll develop a condition called pellagra, which is where your skin becomes red and itchy and inflamed and flaky, amongst lots of other symptoms. Now, vitamin B3 deficiency is rare in the developed world, but there is a big difference between deficiency and optimal levels. And I would argue that if you don't have optimal levels of vitamin B3, it's still going to affect your skin barrier, its function and its appearance. The best sources of vitamin B3 are meat and fish. So aim to eat high quality sources of animal protein a few times a week. Now, if you choose to eat an exclusively plant-based diet, your best sources of niacinamide or vitamin B3 are going to be nuts and legumes and whole grains, particularly wheat-based whole grains. Now, the slight issue here is that the B3 in those foods is much less bioavailable than it is in the animal-based foods. So you're also going to need to make sure that your gut health is really dialed in so that you can extract and use as much of that vitamin B3 as possible. Now I talk more about how to optimize your gut health for your skin health in this video if you want to check that out. So use vitamin B3 on your skin and make sure you're eating high quality protein to benefit from it on the inside too. So to sum up, vitamin A, vitamin C and vitamin B3 are some of the better researched skincare ingredients. We know that they work. Vitamin A promotes clear and youthful looking skin. Vitamin C brightens and vitamin B3 supports a strong skin barrier and a more even skin tone. Now I think there's a place for all three of these in your skincare routine, but for the best longest term results, you want to focus on eating them too. Thank you for watching. If you found that interesting, you'll also like a playlist where I talk more about these nutrients in great detail and I will pop that there for you. I hope to see you there otherwise I will see you next time for another video on nutritional skincare. Thank you for watching.